what's going on guys acreage and recreational pond your thing then you want to stick around to talk and listen to the hot list so we can talk about the property that we are doing the hot hot list today what's going on y'all matt in the hat matt johnson real estate powered by keller williams diamond partners you are tuned in to the hot list i come to y'all monday through friday around 12 o'clock central standard time and we talk about the hot list what is the hot list it is a property that is new to the market been on the market had a recent price reduction or there is something unique about the property i want to share with you get with y'all and today is no exception we also answer a question of the day that is submitted by you guys the viewers and we talk about a sponsor of of the week yes i have i have been gone i took a little hiatus for about a week uh, just to you know take a step back gather gather my thoughts and see what what people thought about it uh, before i get into it the biggest thing that i learned taking a step back my downloads on my my podcast the week that i didn't do anything shot through the roof uh, one day i had 35 downloads and a couple days later i had 45 downloads so was was it worth me taking a little break and a little hiatus i would i would like to think so so i'm back we're going to get right into it with a property that we're talking about today as i mentioned in the in the intro if acreage and a recreational pond are your thing you definitely want to take a look at this property the address is 3620 east highway 268 in vassar just right down the road about 45 minutes it's a four bed two and a half bath two car garage approximately 2400 square feet it is currently listed for three hundred sixty thousand dollars courtesy of liberty real estate here is the very cool part it has 31 acres that's right 31 acres a recreational pond 28 of those acres are fenced off already for livestock this house has a basement there is currently a room down there that is used for an office but could easily be turned into a fifth non-conforming bedroom it's very open concept throughout the the living room the kitchen the dining room uh, tons of natural sunlight there are a couple outbuildings there uh, there's a 30 by 50 farm building and a 40 by 60 shop yeah how cool is that there's tons of of updates with this house there's flooring there's granite countertops it's got a newer roof a newer hot water heater all of this for 360,000. make sure you click on the link in the description it's going to take you right to my website so you can see the pictures yourself absolutely beautiful absolutely phenomenal you are not going to want to miss this property if you have any questions you can reach out to me either through facebook or you can contact me directly through my website and i'm happy to answer some questions for you now this this week is a, is a short week for me and i do not have a sponsor of of the week line lined up um like i said i on my hiatus i just took a complete week off took a step back no posting no social media uh, very little contact with friends and family and i gotta tell you it was absolutely amazing i am excited to get back into it and answer one of the one of the questions of the day typically on tuesdays i do a market update i did want to answer this question as uh, as the temperatures get a little warmer and we'll look at doing a market update tomorrow so the question of the day what can i do to keep cool when working outside on my diy projects that is absolutely a phenomenal question and especially during the summer it is one i definitely want i want to answer so i'm sure everybody knows there's always projects going on. It seems like especially during the summer, that's when most people have have time or have have help with kids being out of school. So whether you are a DIYer or you hire it out, uh, 
just keep in mind that some of these projects are going to require warm temperatures and longer days to get them done and, and knocked out. We're going to focus more on the DIY things today. So no matter what your project you're, you're working on this summer, the one thing that you are not going to escape working outside is the heat. Obviously, summer sees higher temperatures than any other season, and it seems like recently it's only getting hotter. Too much heat and sun can lead to serious health injuries. Uh, speaking from experience, some of these, these health issues and health injuries that I'm going to mention a little later, I have actually had and experienced myself. So when compiling this list and uh, gathering some information to answer this question, I actually reflected on my my own experiences. So we're going to talk about five tips that's going to allow you to beat the heat while you DIY. Number one is going to be stay hydrated. Seems pretty obvious, right? Well, you may be surprised at just how many people don't drink enough water. You want to increase your water intake before, during, and after you're going to be exposed to that heat in and that sun. Now it does pain me to say that you do want to avoid things like coffee, tea, and other caffeinated drinks before expo exposure to the sun. Why? Because that caffeine is going to cause you to lose more more water. You're going to be you're going to become dehydrated quicker. Also avoid sugary sugary drinks, carbonated drinks, and alcohol. The occasional sports drink is okay. For example, I do have Gatorade here at the house. Uh, they're just small, they're small bottles. They are uh, the zero sugar. I have I have those on hand for, uh, for me, for Lisa, for Chase. Also, you guys know that I, I have a water bottle. I carry this around wherever I go. If I go on trips, this goes with me. If I fly, this goes with me. And I use a, a half gallon jug. Typically, I drink a, a gallon of water at by 12 to, to 2 o'clock every single day. On days that I'm going to be outside or days that I, I bike, that jumps up to about a gallon and a half, sometimes two gallons of water. So whether you use a half gallon gallon or you don't want to refill and you just carry two gallons of water whatever it is just make sure that you're drinking enough water before during and after that heat exposure number two is going to be take your time so depending on the conditions your body is used to it can take up to 7 to 14 days for your body to acclimate acclimate to the warmer temperatures Work, if you're going to be working outside in the heat a lot, increase your heat exposure gradually, not all at once. For example, I am used to working in AC. As you guys see, I satellite from home. I have, I have a home office. This is where I work. I very rarely am out in the sun and in, in the heat. So take on a full workload outdoors. This can drastically increase your risk of heat related issues. So what do I mean by that? If I just picked up uh, and decided one day that I'm going to work completely outside, work on a project that is going to overexpose myself. So what I would recommend is smaller tasks that have breaks until your body gets accustomed to being in the sun and being outside. Number three, dress for the weather. When it's hot, you want to take it all off, right? Because you want to keep cool uh, and you want to get a nice nice little tan, right? Speaking from experience, this is a bad idea. Uh, some of y'all know that I recently went through this a few weeks ago and working outside, I actually got a sunburn that was so bad, it was second degree burns and uh, I didn't sleep for almost three days after because of the severeness of, of the sunburn. Less fabric can increase your risk of sunburn 
and can also lead to to more injuries along the way. What I recommend since having done this myself, uh, cover with some light what lightweight material. Uh, make sure that it's loose and doesn't cling to your body. Choose a fabric that is light, it breathes, and it helps wick some of that that moisture away from your body to help to help keep you cool. Quick side note: don't forget a hat and sunglasses. Um, it's not necessarily going to keep you from getting sunburnt, but it will keep you cooler and uh, from your your eyes getting getting blinded. So just quick quick side note number four build some shade shade can make all the difference when working outside sometimes you can you have some trees outside or there's an overhang on your house or wherever you're working at and you can just step in into that shade under that shade and and keep cool if you're not that lucky Take some time to build some type of small shelter to protect you from the sun, whether it's as simple as two by fours or four by fours and a tarp over the top. Uh, if you're going to do something like that, just cover the top only. That way, with the with the wind and the breeze, you're not closing off the sides and you've, you've got a nice breeze coming through there. If you don't have a breeze or you're working in an area where the wind doesn't doesn't blow or it just isn't blowing that day try adding a a fan like get a get a box fan this is going to help create an artificial airflow to help help keep you cool before we jump to number five let's go through these one more time on the five tips to beat the heat number one stay hydrated whether you whatever type of water bottle you use or however you stay hydrated whether it's water bottle camelback glasses, whatever works, make sure you're staying hydrated. Number two, take your time. Ease your way into exposing yourself to the heat and the sun because you do it, you overdo it like, like I did, then you are going to end up in a, in a bad way like I was for a little over a week. So <laughs> recommend just taking your time, getting your, getting your body accustomed to working outside. Number three, is dress for dress for the weather. Don't don't take your take, don't take your clothes off. Make sure that you know you're wearing the the proper clothes, sunscreen, uh, whatever you need to help help keep you covered and keep you from getting getting sunburned. Number four, build some shade if you're not working in an area that already has shade. Whether it's some type of tent, like pop up tent, or you know you build build a shelter or a lean to from a tarp and some two by fours. And number five, I saved this one for last because I have experienced most of these myself and they really, really suck. So I wanna make sure I go over. Watch for warning signs of heat related illnesses. Some of the signs that you're gonna see are greater amounts of sweat than normal or than expected. Confusion, lightheadedness, slurred speech, dry skin or cool skin this is when you have stopped sweating and your skin is really dry and you could either go two ways your skin is going to be cool to the touch or you're going to be burning up which leads to the next one which is increased body temperature and loss of consciousness now myself i have had all all of these before uh when i when i was in the army I have had all of these is absolutely terrible. And um, I, since then, I am more susceptible to heat related illnesses and injuries than most other people are. So if you notice any of these signs for yourself, make sure you get out of the heat, like right meow, because shit's about to get real. You need to get out of the heat and in whether it's just in the shade or or indoors so you can start to cool down and drink some water rehydrate yourself it sometimes these can be really hard to notice or you know maybe you're not paying attention or you don't want to accept it make sure that you have a friend or family member that 
checks on you, whether they just come outside to check on you or call you every 20 to 30 minutes just to see how you're doing. Make sure you're still upright, you're still conscious uh, and coherent enough to know what's going on and that you need to take your ass back inside. So that is what I got for you guys today on the hot list. Thank you guys for watching, tuning in. If you have a, a question you would like submitted, just reach out to me through Facebook. You can also reach out to me through my website. My phone number is posted in here as well. So that's what I got for you guys today. I look forward to answering some more questions and seeing y'all tomorrow. So thank you for watching the hot list with Matt in the hat, Matt Johnson, real estate powered by Keller Williams diamond partners. I do this because your experience matters and should be trusted with a veteran. Y'all have an awesome Tuesday and I'll see you tomorrow.